Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. So today I want to talk about things, not necessarily that I wish I would have known before pregnancy, but just things I didn't know before pregnancy. <laughs> It's such a dumb title. I am 32 weeks at the moment. So I've got two months ago, eight months, eight weeks left. I'm somewhere in my third trimester. Some people say seven months, some people say eight months. I'm gonna claim eight months because pregnancy is actually 10 months long. So, so there is no particular order in which I have my notes for this. Like it's literally just a document on my computer. And I just sat down last week and just typed up thoughts that I had of things I wish I would have known. But the first thing I want to mention, a few things. Every pregnancy is different. What I experience is not what you are going to experience. And also, I guess a trigger warning because I'm going to be talking about miscarriage, just the beginning of this. For everyone that has happened to or almost happened to, everyone wishes they would have known that it was a real possibility and that it was so common and that they didn't know. So that's my first thing I wanna talk about is once you have that positive pregnancy test, it sadly does not mean that that pregnancy is a guarantee. It does not mean you are guaranteed to have a baby in your arms in nine months. That's one sad thing I've learned. I knew miscarriages happened. I know people on YouTube who have had miscarriages, have had struggles with infertility and conceiving. And I always thought, as everyone does, that that is heartbreaking, that is so sad, that's not going to happen to me. I just wish I knew it was more common, but I'm not saying this to scare you if you are newly pregnant or if you are anxious about, you know, possibly miscarrying. It didn't cross my mind until it happened to me and I just kind of wish I would have been more aware of it. The second thing that kind of goes along with that last one, the anxiety that comes with a pregnancy after experiencing a miscarriage or a loss in some sort of way. There's there's just a lot of anxiety in that first trimester and my peak anxiety was around week five. I was convinced that it was too good to be true, that it was all gonna happen again and that I was gonna go to my scan and nothing was gonna be there or something was going to be wrong. It was all fine, it only lasted like that week honestly and I've been perfectly fine ever since. Not everyone throws up. Morning sickness, obviously you hear it's not just in the morning, it can be all day sickness. Mine was much more just nausea than vomit. I never threw up, knock on wood, still haven't, but I do get nauseous. I still get nauseous now, especially in the first trimester. As long as I ate food in the morning and kept some sort of food in my stomach throughout the day, I would be fine. Now I can get overheated and then that makes me nauseous. Travel and like flying can make me nauseous. My sister puked her brains out. Got home from work, 5 p.m., puked her brains out. Didn't happen to me. Pregnancy fatigue, especially in that first trimester, is no joke. You hear that fatigue is one of the symptoms, and when you're trying to like symptom spot, like am I pregnant, am I not pregnant, and you're like, oh, well, I'm tired, there is such a big difference between the fatigue that comes with like the end of your cycle and your period, and it is a completely different ball game, or at least it was for me. It knocked me off my feet. I was <laughs> exhausted all the time and it's kind of cycling back around because I'm not sleeping the best right now and so I'm just tired, but I, it's all positive, it's all good, and I will take a little bit of fatigue. Bloating in the first trimester is a real thing. Like I looked a couple months pregnant just from the bloat. And also you think you look more pregnant than you actually look. I got two pairs of maternity leggings. I wanna say at like the end of her first trimester or the beginning of my second, kind of around that three month mark. I wish I would have, instead of getting those maternity leggings, just gotten that second pair of Lululemon Align leggings that I eventually did. And that just took care of my like legging game. I got one pair of maternity jeans, two shirts. I got a cami and a t-shirt that I still wear. I got a belly band. It was fine for like wearing under stuff and when you didn't want to button your pants, but you couldn't wear it with like tight fitted maternity shirts when you wanted to like be cute and be like, oh, look at my bump because it was lumpy because of the zipper and the buttons. But it's a good option just to kind of like hold your pants on and up when you're still wearing looser tops. People are going to judge your decisions regardless of what sort of life you have. Like, <laughs> whatever you do, people are gonna find something to judge or question. My plant-based diet, drinking caffeine, but it doesn't happen as often as you think it would. And I still have two months to go, so who knows if I'm going to get more. Oh, people don't want you to lift anything. 
which I get and I don't want to do like I can't lift the same amount as I used to and I don't want to like I don't know what you could do lifting stuff but I don't want to you know cause any harm or like accidentally drop something on my belly or anything like that but people won't even let me lift a box like a 10 pound box and I'm like I can do it so people are fascinated by you sure we'll put this one here but I went to Home Depot the other day I'm like I'm clearly pregnant at this point and people were fascinated with what was this pregnant lady doing at Home Depot. I was getting wood lumber to build a compost bin and it's like if you cross over into like a certain part of Home Depot to like the building side, the guy side, it was to a whole new level the other day when I was pregnant like picking up lumber. People were like, what are you doing? Do you need help? Like, what are you gonna build? And I'm like, what do you mean what am I gonna build? Whatever I wanna build. Like, I'm not going around asking you what you're gonna build. People were just like, yeah, super concerned with me trying to carry a two by four. And I'm like, people, I can lift a two by four. Like, I'm not some weak, fragile person, but it was fascinating. Ooh, the lack of energy and motivation is my least favorite thing about being pregnant. I love being pregnant. I am so grateful to be pregnant. And I will not complain about body changes or any of that, but I was not expecting the fatigue and lack of motivation that has come with it. I went from being like right before I got pregnant, I was so focused. I had like a killer morning routine going with getting up early, doing all this stuff, meditating, exercising, journaling, yada, yada, yada. And then it's just like someone clamped the brakes down and there are days where my brain just is in a fog and does not function and it's so frustrating because I know all these things that I have to do and get done in the next two months and it doesn't feel like there's enough time but yet my mind and my body and my energy have just other plans for me so it's been a real adjustment of like just taking the small burst of energy and doing as much as I can or just like fighting through through the fatigue people are really nice to you when you're pregnant or early I mean people are really nice to me when I'm pregnant and I want I'm sure it's when I start carrying on a baby people are gonna be even more nice to me but I like joke like I'm gonna start wearing around a fake bump after this because people are just like so happy everyone wants to like ask you questions and to like talk to you and I'm not complaining it's really it's like a fascinating social experiment experience thing that I'm in right now. One day you'll be munching on some cooked cauliflower and the next day, literally the next day, it will make you want to throw up. Cook cauliflower, cook broccoli, and cook Brussels sprouts. And I think they're like a similar smell, taste, texture sort of thing, especially cauliflower and broccoli. I can do cauliflower and broccoli raw, especially raw cauliflower. Mm, so good. But something about it cooked just makes me want to vomit. So I can't do it. It's fascinating. One day you're eating something and it's fine. And the next day you're like, uh-uh, I'm put off from that. We, oh, I had a veggie scramble the other day from a restaurant here for breakfast. And I took my leftovers home. And the next day I went to eat my leftovers. And I was like, mm-mm, nope, can't do this. Not eating it. When they say that pregnant women pee a lot, I didn't realize to what level they pee a lot. And like, you're supposed to drink more water anyways. I am started out like really dehydrated like little desert animal or something um, and I've really ramped up my water and you're just more thirsty as it is so you're just chugging water all the time and you go to the bathroom constantly sometimes you just can't sleep at night oh well sleep now because you're not going to be sleeping soon or your body's getting ready for you not sleeping when baby comes and it's fine like whatever I know newborns don't sleep I get it but it's just like why can't I sleep now <laughs> The other night I woke up at one something and then at like 3.45 I was like screw it I'm getting out of bed I'm not sleeping anyways I'm gonna go do something and I've done that twice now where I've just gotten up and gone out to the living room and like read a book or worked on stuff because I'm like I'm just gonna be laying in bed driving myself crazy because I can't fall asleep so just go do something and if you can fall back asleep that's fine if you need to take a nap later in the day that's fine too but it just drives me crazy to lay wide awake in bed and I do that a lot. Pregnancy brain, pregnancy fog, placenta brain, whatever. I feel like I normally have a very sharp memory. I pride myself on like knowing where stuff is, like remembering things, and I will walk into a room to do something and completely have no idea what I went there 
went to that room for my brain spaces off a lot more and it's just fascinating and you're just like huh you experience things that you literally have never experienced before in your life acid reflux i've started getting that i would say this past week you can't lay down after you eat because it just kind of like burns and bubbles up. I had one really bad day of it. Rashes. I'm sure I've gotten rashes before in my life, but I have had all sorts of rashes, especially recently. In my first trimester, I had like, we'll call it like pregnancy eczema, and it was really bad around my mouth and I had a couple spots on my forehead. And it's gotten a lot better. I've got a couple spots on my chin and my forehead again, where it's just dry, patches of skin. I also have started getting rashes in my armpits. I don't know if it's like from my deodorant and then like working outside and the friction, like heat rashes in my armpits or just yeah, armpit rashes. It's like little red bumps. I guess I've never had boobs before, so I don't know if that's like a thing. Underneath your boobs and that like little boob crevice, I got kind of like a red rash the other day and I think it was a heat rash, but I don't know. So I'm getting all sorts of fun rashes that I've never had before. Your hips are going to expand, which is a great thing. And like, yeah, duh, it happens. It's one of those things where like, of course it happens. Like, why didn't I like conceptualize that? I want to say this in a positive way because I got a comment in my like capsule wardrobe video that I was body shaming myself, upsetting because I'm a skinny person. And so that's not fair that I'm like body shaming myself and that how is that gonna make people bigger than me feel? I'm not, I'm not trying to come off as negative. It's just like the reality of it. it. My hips have expanded, my butt has grown, and my thighs have grown. Like I've put on weight. That's a natural, normal part of pregnancy. And like, you know it's gonna happen, but it happens and it catches you off guard. And like some negative feelings bubble to the surface and you're like, huh, I didn't expect that. And it's not like I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm disgusting, blah, 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 but it's like, I have cellulite on my thighs that I didn't have there before I was pregnant. Interesting. It's okay to, to feel like not super positive about everything and it's not like that I'm ungrateful for my pregnancy or anything like that. It's just these things are happening. Some aspect of them catch me off guard and I like to acknowledge those feelings and I like to share those feelings with you guys because I don't know, I just think it's interesting and I think it's important for people to know like it's okay to have these thoughts and feelings and to be caught off guard by changes in your body and it's not like you being mean or hard on yourself so anyways your body changes and it's not a bad thing and going along with that one you might be surprised with your sub subconscious reaction to weight gain 99.9% .9 of pregnant people put on weight it's normal they've told me they they're like yeah we want you to put on 35 to 45 pounds and I was like what I have never weighed more than like a certain amount of my life and I am like almost 10 pounds past that and that's fine. I've gained up until this point 20 pounds. Wow, cool. Like my body is just doing this and it's interesting to like see those numbers on the scale go up and like not be like, oh wow, I'm fat, but it's you realize the like subconscious beliefs that have been put into your brain by who knows what, probably yourself. And it's just, it, I, it's interesting to analyze. It's not a negative thing, but I'm just like, that's really interesting that I feel that way. You might be much more emotional. I know I am. I have a really hard time showing my emotions to other people. I do not like being vulnerable. I do not like crying in front of people. I do not like being upset in front of people. I do not like losing my cool or control in front of other people. I don't know where that comes from, but that's just me. We had a really big race, not this weekend, but uh, the weekend before, and I messed up the giant checks and I sobbed about it like lost it and I sobbed and Michael was like was well, it's fine like do you, why are you getting so emotional don't get so emotional because I never get emotional and I was I had snot coming out I was trying to put my shoes on it was like three o'clock in the morning but just like ridiculous things like that happen and you're like I just can't control it maybe let go of some of my stone coldness that I had before. Like maybe this will be a good transition into better expressing myself emotionally. I don't know. You might not be able to keep up with your usual pace. Physically, I am a workhorse. I can lift stuff, I can go, 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 and move, 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 and I can't anymore. I don't have the same stamina I used to, and it takes me a lot longer to recover from even that less 
amount of exertion. And last but not least, even if you have these grandiose plans to do something crazy like run a half marathon, you might come to realize that you can't even run at all and that walking a couple of blocks will give you Braxton Hicks and make you out of breath. I always said the first thing I'm gonna do when I find out that I'm pregnant is I'm gonna sign up for a half marathon and I'm gonna be one of those badass ladies that runs when they're super pregnant yada yada yada. I went on a couple of runs and realized it was not happening. If I go on any sort of brisk walk or any sort of long walk I will get Braxton Hicks contractions. You just kind of have to realize and let go of stuff and adjust to things that you can do and it's wonderful. Like, at the end of all this, I will forever be grateful for being pregnant right now. I've enjoyed it so much. It has been such an experience and a positive one that I've loved. But those are just some of the things about pregnancy that maybe I didn't expect. Little things that have happened throughout the pregnancy that I wanted to throw into a video for you and share. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Do not forget to subscribe to keep up with me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!